I didn't know. I threw a piece of chicken in there just to see because like I didn't think he was gonna eat and he just nailed it. Like I didn't even have time to get my phone out. I just threw it and he hit it. <laughs> well, that's what we've been doing. <laughs> so we just set up the tub that we got yesterday for a little baby tadpole. The gator we just rescued yesterday with the missing tail. So, and he immediately took that chicken. Now he hasn't eaten it yet, but I think he's going to. The way that he hit that, I think he's gonna eat it. So this will be uh, his enclosure for a while, guys. So this will probably last him, I would say, a couple of years, honestly, before we have to upgrade him. Um, but uh, yeah, right now we're just going to see how he does in here and... Oh my God, look at Clover. <laughs> and then see how, uh, see how he does in here and how well he can actually move and swim around in the water in here. So we're going to have to find out. I um, want to raise it to like here, but Chris had a good point. We don't really know if he can get up, yeah. you know? I don't know if he has upward mobility in swimming yet, so it's better to keep him in water where he can stand up to be able to breathe for now until we figure out what he's actually capable of. Um, also, another concern, if you notice, is just a log. There's not a lot of land. Uh, there's a reason for that. So being that he is missing the end of his tail, most alligators, well, not most, all alligators, when they walk, they're putting a good amount of their weight onto their tail and it helps counterbalance and uh, takes a lot of pressure off the feet. So for him, without having a tail, all that weight is going to be on his feet and that can cause arthritis. Now, he's just a little guy right now. He's peeking out right there. That's his butt, actually. Um, <laughs> but he's just a little guy. So for like right now, um, you know, that, that arthritis and whatnot is not that big of a concern. Although I have still seen it start to develop in smaller animals. So we're just going to play it safe with him and uh, try to keep him in the best environment we can to be able to prevent that. So we're not going to have a lot of uh, walking space for him, at least for now. And, you know, again, we're just going to play it by ear and see how he does. We also want to go get plants, right? Yeah, plants. I want to add little fish. And I was also going to say... Um, the chicken's not going to be a consistent thing. Obviously, at this size, they're not catching chickens. They're not really catching birds. They're eating mostly fish and insects and snails. So we want to keep the diet as natural as possible. That was literally just a tiny piece of chicken that I had left over from the other alligator. I didn't think he was going to eat it, so I just threw it in. And, like, I think Chris and I were both shocked that he grabbed it that quickly. Um, so, yeah, but we are going to do, like, insects. And I'll probably put some crickets in here for him. And we'll go collect some snails and things like that. Well, on that note, I already have people criticizing that we're just feeding them chicken and they need whole prey for the it's other been animals. Like, I'm like, like, it's literally, literally been, been like one weeks. month. Uh, we've had alligators for two weeks, a little over two weeks or something. We've really? had the permit for one month, you know. Um, and so far, we've been feeding them chicken. That's what we have on hand right now. But we also have half our animals aren't even eating any food. Um, so for anybody who's concerned... We have concerned, three alligators, right? And one of them is eating. Well, now we have four alligators, I guess, with this little guy. And two of them are eating. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we are going to be getting whole prey for everybody. And that's going to be, uh, you know, majority of their actual diet. So far, also, we've just been doing training. Um, just trying to work on relationships with them. We're not giving anybody any real uh, large amounts of food to put on any weight or anything yet. Um, but yeah, so we are going to do whole prey and whatnot, but there's nothing wrong with doing some raw... Oh, and yeah, he's gone. He was coming up for a second. But there's nothing wrong with using, uh, you know, raw chicken and whatnot for training and small pieces and uh, even for like half their diet. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, um, I don't know. I've already had people just like kind of getting a little weird about that and um, you know everyone's an expert because of google well i don't want to I'm, I'm not trying to give attention to the haters i am trying to leg uh, like legitimately address in case people actually are wondering you know um and they're not just trying to be jerks about it people are actually legitimately wondering like yes they're going to be getting whole prey um and that is going to be the majority of their diet but right now it's just been uh, raw chicken that's good for training and whatnot but you would have to have been feeding them raw chicken for years and only that before you start to see some effects from feeding them that. Uh, giving them raw chicken for two weeks since we've had them, zero effect whatsoever, or even three years from now. I don't think you'd, well, for him, yes, but for the adults, you would not see any effect. I don't think you'd see any effect for, for the adults, like decade probably before you start seeing anything happen. I know you feel a little bad, but like, should we get this guy a little bit of live crayfish? I think he would like that. I know, I kind of feel bad too. I feel bad for crayfish. I know, I feel bad for crayfish and I feel bad for like little live fish too, but. Well on that note, people also ask that one too. Uh, what do you do about the ethical dilemma of 
feeding carnivorous animals. Um, that's why I like to feed them frozen thaw. You know, we get, uh, you know, like frozen thawed rats, chicks, quail, and they're gassed. You know, that's how they do it. So they just go to sleep and then they freeze them, ship them to us. We thaw it out, feed it to them, you know, everything like that. We're not going to do any uh, live prey feeding, by the way, either. I've had people asking me that one a lot too. Uh, we do not ethically believe in doing that. That is not cool. Um, now, people then argue, what about enrichment for the animal? Uh, like fish in here? Yeah, I, maybe, you know, but like as far as like more sentient animals, um, definitely not. You know, like I would never be feeding like live rats to them or something There's like no that. There's no reason to. There's no reason to. Um, the animal doesn't, the, the predatory animal is not having any great benefit from that. And the prey animal is definitely having some extremely traumatic experiences. We're that also not going to be feeding roadkill. No. Because I, I know that's the next question. Yeah. No roadkill. You just don't know where it came from. Like, you don't it's know if it's sketchy. poison. You don't know if parasites, like... Yeah. It's just like, why Why? why is it worth the risk? Yeah, Cost I mean, some places benefit. do. I don't know. I'm, like, kind of on the fence about it because it's like, that's good. They're getting, like, wild meat, but then you don't know where it came from, and you don't know if it was poison. Even, even like, donated from hunters. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, like, we don't know if the animal is sick, and there's, like, this weird deer virus, and I don't know, it just freaks me out. Well, that won't affect them anyways, but know, you're talking about, like, prions. But either either out. way, um, I don't know. If it's donated from, like, hunters, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but, like, roadkill, like, if, if you're hunting and you see an animal's like, there's something wrong with that thing, probably not going to hunt that one, you know what I mean? <laughs> Especially if you're trying to feed for yourself. Um, but as far as roadkill goes, like, that maybe it was in the road because it was sick you know something like that or you just don't know the background you don't know the history and some a lot of places do that i'm not trying to down them in any way whatsoever uh it's just it's a risk that i don't think we want to take at least at this point in time we're not interested in taking that risk we're also new to this if, if, if we've been doing this for 30 years i'm sure we'll be much more complacent like yeah yeah feed yeah, it the deer whatever. feed it the hit deer but yeah. right now no well you just <laughs> yeah again it's it's just more the the parasite load poison <laughs> things like you just don't know you know so it's a risk Hi, Asami. Good morning, baby. Hi. Oh, it's biting flies. Oh, look at this chunk's coming. Oh, look at her. Oh, she wants to play. Oh, she wants to play. Oh, ho, ho, she's so cute. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, look at her. Oh, look at her. This big girl. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, look at her. She wants to play. It's still kind of early, so it's not too hot out yet. So she's all excited. Oh, she's all excited. Oh, ho, ho, ho. You stomping? Oh, you stomping. Oh, look at her. <laughs> Asami. Oh, she's so vicious. She's so vicious. Look at how cute she is. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Asami. Oh. Emu just hissed at something. And now he's flopping. Or she. <laughs> Hi, piggies. Sit, Daisy. Good girl, Daisy. Look at Petunia. Sit, Petunia. Oh, good Petunia. Sit, Julie. Sit. Sit. Good Julie. Sit, Petunia. Good Petunia. Sit, Daisy. Go, girl, Daisy. Oh, Daisy's the cutest. You sitting, Petunia? Yeah. Good, Petunia. Not good, Petunia. Julie, you being a big bad girl. Look at the size of this pig. Yeah, the big pig. And you can be a big pig too. Come here, Daisy. Don't bother the goats. Daisy! Daisy! Come here, Daisy. Good girl. Sit. Good girl, yes. 
Petunia, you sit. Good Petunia. Julie, sit. Sit. Good girl. Yes. These good pigs. These good piggies. Here's the baby foster piggies. My babies. Oh, we already know I'm gonna pet you. This is what we have to do. Make you guys be nice, grab you with food, and then pets. Oh, these big pigs. You're getting so big. You're getting so big. Yeah. And they're getting a lot more used to being pet and friendly. If you guys have been following for a while, you'll remember how they were in the beginning. They were just terrified of everything. You couldn't get near these guys. So again, um, you know, I'm gonna say this every day. <laughs> they are open for adoption. You can adopt one of them. Uh, we are fostering them for Eastern Snouts. Originally, it was a temporary foster, which I thought that meant a month, but here we are six months later and I still have all these pigs. So we've only gotten one adopted out. That was Rudolph. So we still have uh, these four left, which Gabby is so good with the names. I'm not as good with the names. This one is Puddles. I know that much, so that's Puddles. And then we have, I think this is Amy Swinehouse. And then we have uh, Molly and, oh my goodness, what is the other one? Something, I don't know, something cute. Gabby comes up with all the names for everything, by the way, and she always has really good names. And I really suck at remembering names. I don't remember people's names all the time. I forget it, I'm really bad about it. But either way, they're cute, I know that much. Now we're feeding the Kawadis. Hi guys. So they are getting, uh, we got a bunch of stuff in here. We have some cut chicken, grapes, watermelon, banana, apple, uh, baby food, dried bugs, pineapple, cantaloupe, and plum. Lots of good stuff. You excited? You excited? You know, can I get my phone? Yep. Now we're feeding the foxes. So there's Kira and her log, and then here is Yue. So the foxes are getting some uh, cut up raw chicken and chicken grinds. So separate kinds of chicken, different tastes. And then cantaloupe, apple, and uh, exotic canine diet in there too. Some greens in there too for them. Hazel, you being crazy. You bad girl, Hazel. Look at her. Sure who's boss, Shippo? Nope, he's gonna run away and hide. I would too, buddy. And Shippo enjoying some cantaloupe. So yeah, foxes are omnivores. So they do eat, uh, you know, both the veggies and the meat. Mainly meat. That's what they mainly like, but uh, he's actually, he was eating his cantaloupe first. So they, they'll eat both though. It's like 10% uh, of their diet is vegetative matter. And here's Miss Hazel. She's so pretty. I mean, yeah, she screams like a banshee, but she's so pretty. Loli, is it nice and clean? Oh, don't steal my phone. Is it nice and clean now? Yeah. Yeah, a good girl. A good girl. And cute little beady eyes. Yeah. Here are the Patagonian Mara. My guys are enjoying their greens and their pellets. That's Timothy and Topanga, so male and female. And they're very cute, very funny looking animals. They're like a guinea pig rabbit thing. There you go. Petri. Petri. Come get it. Petri. Good boy. Look at him getting more and more brave. Good boy, Petrie. Hi, Bean. Oh, hi, Jelly Bean. 
Hi, big guy. You happy? You got your blueberries. Here you go. It's got blueberries and banana and apple. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Come here. Good girl. There you go. Good girl, Chloe. Hi, Cupid. Hi, Cupid. Oh. Hi, Cupid. Look how pink he is. There's his ear in there. You guys see that? It's kind of cool. There's his ear right there. Yeah. Birds look freaky without feathers. Now we're in the small parrot aviary. Look at this lineup. Look at them all. They're so cute. Look at them. You guys are adorable. And look at all the eggs I just got from the quail. Yeah, pretty cool looking variety in their patterns. Hi, Sami. That big girl. Oh, look at that big girl. Oh, look at that big girl. Oh, look at that. And some banana, yeah. Where are you gonna play? Oh, you wanna play? She doesn't know if she wants to play or eat. Oh, you're gonna get the peppers. Look at this, the pepper. Yes, the peppers are her favorite. And the emu over there, trying to eat the light. You know, would you stash your pepper? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh so vicious. Oh, so vicious. Oh, so vicious. Look at her. She could actually bite the crap out of you if she wasn't playing. <laughs> She's actually mad, that's gonna immediately rip you open. They have some serious jaws on them. But she's sweet. And she wants to play. Oh, you stomping. Oh, you big stomping girl. Oh, you big stomping girl. Hi, Jet. He's getting some duck grinds today, which he's actually eating. Yay, that's good. I was worried he wasn't gonna eat it because they don't have a new rabbit thought for him and that's like his exclusive thing that he loves. Pretty good, he's eating some duck and he's got some blueberries in there and some peppers. And his goofy emus. Time to get Olaf. All right, heading in for nighttime now. It's 8.30 at night, even though it's still light out. We're gonna go to bed, Olaf. We're gonna get your medicine and go to sleep. See if that snake is there. I do not see it. So if you guys saw the end of yesterday's video, there was a ribbon snake sleeping in that bush. So I figured I'd check. We're gonna go to bed now. Good night.